Hello everyone. Welcome to the next training session of SAP FICO module. In today's training, we'll be continuing the cost center accounting part where we have completed couple of the configuration steps, many of most of the configuration steps in the last training session. In today's training session, we will be covering the activity type and a statistical key figure which were left and then we will be moving to the unit testing part. So moving to the first that is activity type. Activity types are production or service activities rendered to a work center or cost center that are used to allocate cost. Activity types generally include different types of labor. Example setup, production labor, machine labor etc that are performed by personnel within a work center or cost center. The cost center in which the activity is performed is referred to as the sender and the cost object receiving the allocated cost are called the receivers. We'll go for the configuration steps. Let's further discuss on the activity type. Activity type used by SAP to allocate both directly and indirectly expenses based upon an amount of output for a given cost center. The activity type becomes the vehicle through which the quantities are traced into the controlling part. So with the help of activity type only we can track the quantities Example of activity quantities includes some of the examples are like production hours where we can record the quantity of hours devoted on a on a particular part, laps produced, energy consumes in kilowatt hours. So we can we can go for these quantities and we can come to know that how many quantities of energy has been allocated or how many hours of production hours have been put up and all accordingly how much how many hours of machines uh, have been allocated and all so this is why the activity type becomes more important so let's see how this can be covered up in the SAP system so moving to the so the activity types are used within the SAP system to track the activity or output within a cost center. Other objects within the controlling area will pull from a given cost center's resource and use them as their own. To ensure that the proper credit is given at the proper rate and for proper output type, activity types should be built at a proper level of details. As already said, there are many examples of that as discussed. Uh, further, it could be labor, labor hours, overhead rate, electricity used in kilowatt hours and consulting hours as well. So the functions of activity type is to provide credit to the resource cost center at a specified rate multiplied by M an amount of the activity. Just let's take a practical example like that there is a cost center of suppose 1000, 1000 is a cost center which contains all the resources or employees that are used to support the plant maintenance functions. The cost center and another cost center 2000 requires service to a piece of its machinery, the service utilizes 40 hours of the lever at the rate of $10 per hour. At the end of the period, the cost center 1000 is credited for $400 of labor, whereas the cost center 2000 is debited for $400 as the cost has been allocated to the another cost center that is 1000. The posting occurred as a result of assignment 
of an activity type called labor which was planned at a rate of ten dollars to the cost center 1000 the maintenance activity was allocated internally within the controlling and as a result there will not be any FI document generated in the system so you can see how this cost center 1000 to 2000 this uh, CO document has been generated internally where the cost center 1000 was credited and the cost center 2000 was debited for this service which has been utilized in the cost center 1000 so in similar ways this activity type is used internally in the controlling part for allocating the cost from one cost center to the another cost center let's see how we can create a cost center uh, sorry an activity type in the SAP system so we can have the path on the screen it is IMG controlling cost center accounting then master data actually in cost center accounting we had discussed that there are three master data one is cost center which you have already covered in the last training session the next is activity type and the third one is statistical key figure so this is again is a master data under the cost center accounting so let's see how we can go for it so first we need to go to SPRO enter we need to go to controlling in controlling we need to go to cost center accounting spend then in that we need to go to master data and in master data we need to go to activity type as you can see this is the second master data in cost center accounting so we can expand this part now and once we expand you will find the option over here as create activity type so with this option we can create the activity type we can click on to execute so once you click on to the execute option over here you will find two options on the screen one is to create the activity type another is to change the activity type so to create the, the activity type we first need to click on to double click on to the create activity type so once I double click on to the create activity type as you can see now the system first first ask you for the controlling area so you need to assign your controlling area that is Z100 enter now once I enter the controlling area after that now I need to assign the activity type and the date from which it will be valid from so it's very much similar to the cost center as we created so suppose I take it as M L A B M L A B means material labor or take it as M T B L R labor and you can put the date over here from which you want this activity type should be created and should be used so I take this date suppose from 1st 10 2014 October 1st to this so once I assign the date and entered on the screen it takes me to the second screen now as you can see on the system so the first thing to notice is that the proper controlling area has to be set and defined on the record the next is the record for which the field are required now the next we assign the material type that is MTLBR and we assign the date and when we entered it took us to the next screen that is over here now we need to fill these details first is the name so over here we have to enter the name of the activity type as this field is required so I can put it over here as material labor then moving to the next the same description can be taken up now moving to the activity unit in this you have to enter the unit of measure in which the activity type is measured it could be hours, it could be minutes, it could be gallons per minute, it could be kilometer per hour, it could be kilowatt. So what, what, whatever it seems should be required for this can be taken up over here. So suppose I move up to the option over here to have a list of all the activity unit 
and accordingly we can decide which unit need to be taken up over here so for material lever I will be taking in R but if there is something else you can accordingly decide what will be the unit of measure so I would be taking over here is R you can find it with this find option over here so So we can find it over here. They are R's, HR. We can select that over here on the screen. So you can see the R has been selected. Now we can move to the next that is C cost center categories. So you need to select the category as well to which category this particular activity type belongs to. So it is a material label which should basically relate to the production part. So I can select the production and I can continue over here. Now once I have taken this now we can move to the next that is the allocation default values. So moving to the next is now activity type category so we can move on to this category and we can select the options. So in the activity type category you will find that there are four categories first is manual entry allocation second is indirect determination indirect allocation the third is manual entry and indirect allocation and the fourth is manual entry no allocation so out of this it has to be decided which appropriate category has to be taken the first manual entry manual allocation is the category used if you desire to measure the actual activity against a plan activity rate for example to process a credit for overhead activity you enter at the end of the period the actual production quantity in pounds during the internal allocation process SAP will take the actual amount entered and multiply it by the planned activity price so the second one is Category 2 that is indi indirect calculation and indirect allocation. The category 2 and 3 are both related to indirect allocation of activity. Then the third allocation refers to again the indirect allocation which is not needed. And the fourth is manual entry, no allocation, where all planned and actual activity is entered manually. It is not possible to allocate activity with this category. So it is purely a manual part. So what we would be taking up over here is the one that is manual entry and manual allocation. That is what has been assigned uh, activity type category. Then moving to the next is allocation cost element. Now you need to enter this part, enter the allocation cost element that both the sender and the receiver will, res will be posted with. So in this case we need to assign a secondary cost element if needed else even you can leave it blank it is not uh, necessary to be assigned over here. So you can leave that blank as well moving to the next. The next is the price indicator so we can select the price indicator over here with the list of options. So the options available is plan price automatically based on activity plan price automatically based on capacity and determined manually so we can select the first one plan price automatically based on activity so this is how you need to select these all options and once we have selected these options now we can move on and save the screen so as to create the activity type so once I click on to the save option okay you must specify a cost element for category 1 okay so it asks that the cost element is a mandatory part so in this allocate cost element we need to move for the list of cost elements of which we can assign it over here so no allocation cost element can be selected from this to this okay 
so we can suppose take it over here as 5000 does not exist okay so we have assigned the cost element 50000 over here and then we save the option over here on the screen and the cost activity type has been created so once the activity type has been created now we can even go and have a change option as well in the activity type in case you want to change the master data for some purpose you can move on to the change category option over here and with the change option you can move to this change activity type and you can select over here and you can enter on the screen and you can make the changes as required as per the convenience what changes are needed and if you want to change the indicators or you want to lock this activity type over here then even you can lock this with the indicator option over here and the activity type will be locked so this is how you can create the activity type and you can even go for the changes in the activity type as well now moving to the next option next uh, part next configuration step is statistical key figure statistical key figure provides the foundation for accurate and effective cost allocations between cost objects it utilized to support internal cost allocations involving allocations assessments and distributions like examples are like number of employees square footage minutes of computer usage and all etc so more of statistical key figures help the user track activity in another manner the key figures are designed to be used in reporting and analysis and assist in assessment or distribution of cost throughout the cost center accounting environment key figures are statistical in nature and thus are invisible to the fa environment and that is why no fa document has been generated with respect to the statistical key figures posting to a key figure do not integrate with profit center accounting either they are however powerful when utilized properly some of the examples are like units sold number of employees production hours square footage of office space and all that is why this has a different purpose within controlling and within the controlling internal part key figures are exclusive to the cost center accounting within the co but they can be picked up and utilized by the profit center accounting as well in certain cases so in this part how we can create a statistical key figure the part is on your screen again we need to go to the cost center accounting then the master data and in master data statistical key figures so let's move on to the sap screen and in this you can find it over here in the master data there is the option of a statistical key figures and that is what we need to expand and over here you can see maintain a statistical key figure this is the step which we need to execute so now executing the configuration step so once executed again you will find over here as one option to create the statistical key figure and another step is to change the statistical key figures so we can double click on to the create a statistical key figure so as to create the key figures so when i double click it took me to the next screen where we can create a statistical key figure so whatever uh, part has to be created has to be created over here so first we need to enter the key figure that uh, has to be created the name can be up to 6 alpha numeric characters in length even we can copy one statistical key figures 
from another controlling area as well but that is not needed so let's take uh, one of the statistical key figure as SL0001 so suppose I am creating SL0001 or even we can take something else as well like uh, SV0001 so this is what I have been taking up once I have taken a six character code or indicator we can enter on the screen so the screen will take us to the next screen now we can put the description over here so the description I will be putting up over here is sales volume in pounds the next thing we need to do is we need to select the statistical key figure now enter the moving up to this particular option over here in this we need to enter the unit of measure by which the entries will be measured now we can we can pull up the list of all the key statistical measure units with the option over here F4 key and we can find that there are different measure of units as mentioned on the screen so whichever we need we can take that even if we want pounds we can take LB if need hours we can take H and for each EA so if we need pounds we can go and we can find it out over here from find option LB and you can see over here on the top of this is LB as US pound mass we can select that over here on the screen that is been selected for sales volume in pounds we have selected the unit of measure as pound now moving to the next is key figure categories with this setting you can determine how the key figures will be utilized there are two options as on the screen one is fixed value and another is total value fixed indicates that the amount entered will be consistent throughout all the periods within a fiscal year and should be carried forward to each period example of a fixed value might include a square footage of a building or number of employees in a department the amount does not change period to period it remains fixed whereas in a total volume value part total values indicates that the amount could change from period to period therefore should not be carried forward into any future periods it has to be looked accordingly example includes the number of kilowatt hours of electricity used or the number of units sold within a period so whichever option is needed accord according to the activity that can be selected for example I will be taking over here as total values because the sales volume could differ from period to period it cannot be fixed throughout the fiscal year so the total values has to be selected so when this particular configuration step is completed now we can move on and we can save this option and the key statistical figure is created as you can see the data is saved on the foot notes so now if you want to change even the key statistical figure you can go to this change option and you can double click on it to change the statistical key figure as well so this is over here change the statistical key figure you can select the key figures over here and then you can enter on the screen and it will take you to the next part so if you want to change any description or anything else at that point of time you can even go for the changes in it and then you can save the screen so this is how the key statistical figure can can be created on the system so this is how we have covered all the configuration steps within the SAP cost center accounting part and now we can move to the next part that is the unit testing so now we'll be looking after how the controlling module can be used in the SAP system in a real practical scenarios so we'll be doing certain transactions which will see that how the cost centers cost elements profit center are being used into the SAP system so we'll go through few of the 
transactions as on your screen like posting the GL document then displaying GL line items post vendor invoice or payments so we'll execute few of them and the rest can be done or can be can be processed by you at your end as well so let's take up the transaction like post GL document so we'll be posting a, a GL document over here with the transaction FB50 enter so over here we can select the document date and the posting date so the document date I would be taking up is uh, suppose December 7 2014 similarly over here December 12 2014 and then we can move to the next enter so we can select the GL account now so the transaction which I would be doing over here suppose is that let's see have the list of all the GL account so the transaction which I will be doing right now is I will be taking the salaries payable and on the another side I will be taking the salary account just for an accounting entry So the next is uh, the salaries. So I've selected the salaries. Now what I will be doing is I will be suppose I will be taking up provisions. So I will be taking this and I am putting up over here thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand dollars. Now what happens when a controlling module comes into effect? In that case, you need to have to ensure that the expenses GL must have a cost element the first part so we can check with the transaction FS00 whether the salaries GL account has a cost element or not so you can see this is a salary GL now in this you need to go to this edit cost element over here and once I click on to this we will find that there is a salary cost element already defined and the description is already in place so it's okay we just need to cross check so it's already there so there is no problem so every cost element has been created for every expense GL account and now once every GL has a cost element it must be assigned to a cost center so we need to move on this further path onto this side and we need to see where is the cost center option in it where we need to assign a cost center so we need to move on you can see over here there is a cost center option in this so in the salaries account only we need to assign the cost center in this part for the expenses GL so we can move on to the list of cost centers so once you uh, go for the list pull up the list of all the cost centers continue and we can see all the list will be generated in a while so you can see there is one particular cost center calculate uh, created as of now you can create multiple cost centers as we discussed uh, in the last training session accordingly so the more cost center you create and post the transactions will give you more understanding so double click on this and it will be selected so you selected this cost center over here the same cost center you can take on the upper side as well and once we have taken the cost center now we can go for simulating the transaction okay it says an entry in the field is not permitted so we don't need the cost center in the first line item we just need to assign the cost center in the expense GL account line so that is what we have assigned over here and now we can go to the simulate option so once I go for the simulate option now the document will get simulated so as on your screen it has been simulated now and then we can go for posting the transaction so once I click on to the post let's see a document number will be generated so as on the screen the document number has been generated onto the system and now we can go and we can see the document and the display part 
So if you display the document now on the screen, this was the cost center and on the basis of this, the profit center has been picked as well. So if you remember, when we create a cost center master record, in that we have to assign the profit center as well. So on the basis of cost center, the system also gets to know which profit center it belongs to. And if you remember, we we created the profit center with the series 1 and the cost center with the series 1 initially that refers to plant 1. If the cost center is of starting series is with 2 that means that refers to the plant 2 where the profit center will also be assigned of plant 2 only. So this is how you need to create your nomenclature while creating the profit center, cost centers and uh, accordingly you need to assign the cost profit centers to the cost center as well so this is it how we can post the document and if you go for the salary account or any either of any of these accounts you can find that in the transaction f a g l l 3 enter here you can assign the gl and then we can execute this gl account over here now and we'll see that even in this you will find the cost center and the profit centers in the GL line item reports as well. So you can see over here this was the document and in this there is a profit center reflecting to you. Even if you want to have the cost center you can go to this layout change layout option and in this you can search the cost center on this side ascending order then we can simply search the cost center in this so you will find the cost center this is over here we need to select it and then we need to drag it on the left side and then we can go to continue so you can see over here now the cost center and the profit center has been updated accordingly so this is how your reports gets generated Similarly, if you create further more cost centers within the same profit center or the same plant, like this is 11 0, 0, 0, 0, and similarly you create 1 2 0, 0, 1 3 0, 0, 1 4 0, 0, 0, 0, multiple cost centers with the same plant because that belongs to the same plant 1, so it will have the same profit center 1 0, 0, 0. But if the cost center belong to a different plant in that case the cost center master record should have the profit center of the second plant that is 12000 because every plant has a separate profit center so this is how the reports gets generated from the system accordingly now similarly we can move on to the another transaction that is now this is the trans the report we just executed to have the rep the GL line item. It is the substitute of FBL 5 and only. That is the new report from SAP side which uh, gives you more detail. FAGLL03. This is the latest report for dis uh, displaying the GL line items. Moving to the next is similarly you can go for vendor invoices as well. And once, uh, if you go for vendor invoices, uh, the transaction is FB60. Enter. Now, in this also, you can select a vendor with the F4 key, and we can get the list of the vendor over here. So, suppose I take this particular part, TCS as a vendor, and I can put the date as well, like January 1. or even I can take April or any other date for that matter 2012 to 14 so this is I have taken the date I can put the amount like ten thousand dollars I can take the GL account over here that could be with the suppose I take with this and I can take the enter so there is an advance it gives the message to you continue now entered 
So once you have filled all these details, now we can we have to assign this particular GL. This is re, this refers to an expense part, a GL which is starting with the transaction uh, with the GL number S4 is an expense. An expense would always be assigned to a cost element. So even that you can search over here that whether this has a cost element or not. So that is over here. This has already been defined. So now we can move on to the transaction. Now in this again we need to go to the cost centers and we need to assign a cost center. So in this you need to go and you need to assign the cost center over here. Again. So the cost center is again the same production. I have assigned the cost center now over here and then we can move on to simulate the transaction. Enter. Simulate. So you can see the entry has been simulated and then TDS has also been deducted because the TDS code has been assigned to the vendor master. So this is how the transaction has been simulated and now we can post this transaction and a document number has been generated as under. If you want to see this document number, we can again go to the transaction FB03, enter. And you can see this is the document number. This is the company code and you need to put the fiscal year, enter. So you can see over here again in the purchase part, that is the GL, you can find these cost center over here as well as the profit center. And if you run these all of these reports in the GL line item, even in that you will find these. So you can see over here that all the different GL account has the same profit center. So this gives you an idea that uh, this, this particular transaction refers to the plant one. So this is why the profit center cost center become helpful because you have got number of different plants so every plant can be assigned a particular separate profit center and on the basis of profit center you can easily segregate your documents you can easily segregate your financial statements your every transaction every report can be segregated at plant level on the basis of profit centers and even within that if you want all the expenses to be segregated on the basis of cost centers that can even be segregated as well. So this gives a lot of help in understanding the business with the help of different reports at profit center level, cost center level and which help the management in deciding many crucial decision makings. So just this is how you can post the transaction. Similarly, you can go ahead and uh, you can make the payment as well to the vendors. So for that, the transaction is F-58, enter. So over here, we can move to enter payment and then we can move to make the payment over here. We can select the date. And then you can select the profit center over here as well. There is no profit center as of now, but that can be over here as well. So now we have selected this. We can move to process open item. Okay, it says the number range is missing. Okay. So let me create the number range FBN1.
So now we can go ahead with the transaction now for the year 2014. Okay, we need to execute the transaction once again. F 58, and now we can. Select the vendor. Now we can go to process open item. And once you move over here, you can find now that this was the invoice that was there. So this is which we need to select. And I need to correct the amount as well over in the banking part. So that has been corrected. Now we can again move to process open item. So now we can move on to simulate the document over here. So this is it, and we can save it. So in this case, there is no profit center or cost center been involved because they are not been active over here right now. So that need to be activated. Then only we can have that can be done. So you can see there is no cost center, profit center active. So now. Once a cost controlling module has been implemented, what is needed is that the expenses part should have the cost center as a mandatory option, so that every expense should flow to the cost center, so that a proper report can be generated internally from the controlling for the management perspective. So for that, what, how we can we can make the cost center mandatory for every expenses transactions. So this is where the main part comes up with the filled status group now. Every expense GL has been assigned to the filled status group over here as G004 as you can see. And in this, there is a cost center option where we can make that particular cost center mandatory, required, or optional. So that is what we can do it over here. So let's make uh, the cost center option as a mandatory part for all the expenses GL that is G004 filled status group. Now for that, the transaction code is OBC4. If you remember, we did it in the SAP. You must have done in the SAP FI module. While making the basic settings of FI module part, so the transaction OBC4 enter. So once we entered over here, this is the field status group which belongs to the company code 1200. So we need to select this and we need to go to field status groups, double click. So in that you can find Z004 over here. We can double click on to 0004 and we find it over here now on the next screen so in this screen we need to go to additional account assignment double click and once we double click you will find this cost center which is optional over here can be made mandatory or a required field so once we click on to this required option and save this particular field status group now the cost center has become mandatory for all the expenses GL account. Similarly, the revenue or the income GL should be made mandatory for the profit centers. So these are something which should come by the consultant itself that these fields has to be made mandatory so that the cost or all the values should flow to the controlling module so as to have a proper internal reports for the management so that the management decisions can be taken in the right direction. So now the next is OBC4 again and whenever you create any income GL account in that the filled status group that is used is revenue that is G029 if you remember. Else you can revisit and check any of your income GL. Every income GL should have the filled status group assigned as Z029. And in this, we can double click on it and we can go to again the 
additional account assignments double click on it and that you will find the profit center over here so we need to again make this profit center as a required field in this particular part so once we click on to this as a as a required entry now we can save this part and now it has been saved so this is how you need to make the cost center and the profit center mandatory but mind it this can be this should be done only if the controlling module has been implemented in the particular company code so these are how these different transactions can be posted into the system and you can do the transaction you can check how the cost center profit centers have been held like uh, if you go for a transaction code as we discussed FAG LL03 enter now suppose I want what are the different transactions which had taken place for the profit center of plant 1 or I can say what are the different transactions taken place for plant 1 so how I can have a look of that I need to assign the company code over here and now I can go to this custom selections and in custom selections you will find a field of profit center so once you double click on it now you will find an option over here and in this you can select the profit center because every plant has a profit center a single profit center for a single plant so in this you will find that this particular plant is this and this plant has got two different profit center divided as well so if you want you can go for this or even you can go for this suppose I go for this particular profit center 11000 and now I want to execute the report so I need to first save this option and then I need to execute over here so once I execute you will find if there is any any data in it so you can see on the screen that there are two transactions which has been posted with the profit center 11000 as in the screen so this gives you all the transaction details in one go in the SAP system now moving to the next is certain reports can be checked so the reports for the reports we can go over here on the screen to the information system or to accounts this is the SAP easy access and in that we can go to the controlling part and in controlling there are a number of different reports which are available which you can execute and we can have a look of them like these are the different reports for cost centers as you can see you can execute any of these reports like I have executed one cost center actual plan variance once you double click on it this is the structure which comes on, my, on your screen where you have to fill the controlling area then the fiscal year then the period from and to and the plan version will be zero and now we can execute this report and the report will be executed so this is there now as of now in this particular report these are the two cost element which have been involved purchases and salaries in purchase account is a transaction of ten thousand dollar in the salaries account is a transaction of thirty thousand dollars which we just did in today's training session only and these are the actual cost there is no plan cost as of now in it and as a result the total variance is of ten thousand dollars and thirty thousand dollars so this is over here similarly you can go back again yes to exit you can further execute more of such reports as under your screen on the screen like range for cost centers is also there so again you can fill the details for these cost centers and the cost center report can be executed we need to assign the controlling area fiscal year then from and to period and then we can execute the report now 
and once you execute in this also you will find that this particular cost center has been used as of now because as of now we have created only one cost center that is 110000 you can create multiple cost centers and the more you create and you do transactions with different multiple cost centers then more of the transactions will be visible to you on the reports which will be helpful to you so this is how you can have a look to the actual and actual there is no plan as of now again no to exit the report similarly we can move to the profit center reports as well further so there are different reports as and more you explore you will find more of such reports in this particular part similarly you can find reports for profit centers as well in the information system reports so in the reports you will you will see number of different reports over here for profit center group level reports are there profit center level reports are there so there are different reports which you can execute with the help of this and it will give you more and more ideas that how different there are, there are huge number of reports from SAP which can be used for different purposes so this is how your cost center accounting has been done and this is how you need to go through all these processes have to execute this and the only one thing can be said that as more and more cost centers groups you create and post number of different transactions in different cost centers profit centers and execute the reports try to check the GL line item balances with FAGLL03 transactions and you will see how these are very very helpful for the internal controlling purpose reportings so this is all in the controlling part of cost center accounting we'll see in the next training session with a new topic since then till then thank you